first, I want to bring in my political panel, Republican strategist Ford O'Connell and Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall. And welcome to both of you. And, and Ford, I want to start with you. You know, she was asked about uh, about her demeanor, but she switched it over to attacking Trump on his stance with Vladimir Putin, basically portraying them as friends. Was that effective? Well, look, Trump had the better night last night, but neither of them had a good night. And with mm. three weeks to go before the first presidential debate, both candidates have a lot to work on if they want to be the 45th president of the United States. I will say this. The reason why you know that Trump had a slightly better night is because, as you pointed out earlier, she gave her first press conference in 277 days. And much of that was to clarify some of the things she said. You know, Leslie, when she had that news conference this morning, a lot of those questions were softballs. Uh, yet last night, it seemed that the criticism against Matt Lauer was that he was giving uh, Donald Trump a lot of softballs and special treatment. Who do you think came out on top last night? Well, it's interesting how there's very different perspective. Um, I felt that Hillary Clinton was stronger uh, last night, and I felt that her comments were much more uh, palatable. I would agree with you. It's a softball question to ask somebody about smiling. You know, uh, being on TV, I'll get that all the time. You know, you didn't smile enough. And it's like, but were you listening to what I said? And, and I don't honestly care if our future president is smiling or not, especially if they're talking about uh, putting our men and women but, uh, in harm's way. I, I but, think it's it's ridiculous that a reporter would ask but, that. But Leslie, I, I got to say this. The going take last night was that Hillary Clinton was stronger on substance and Donald Trump was stronger on style. And you know darn well that when it comes to a lot of voters and their perception, style matters a lot. And the one thing is Clinton looked defensive and, and Trump looked confident. What I will say about Donald Trump is he needs to be a lot wiser with his words because he has very little experience. And what he's being judged on is the tone and tenor of what he says. And also sometimes he seems to over talk it like he did with with Putin. So both candidates have a lot to work on. And Hillary Clinton has to understand this is a popularity contest, not a college debate. Well, let me, let me play this for both of you, because obviously he's being criticized for his uh, basically, let's just call it a love fest with Vladimir Putin. And this has been going on for several weeks, but it came up again in the commentary that we saw this morning. I want to play you this thought uh, real quick and get, for, get your reaction on the other side. I think when he calls me brilliant, I'll take the compliment, OK? He is really very much of a leader. I mean, you can say, oh, isn't that a terrible thing? He called I mean, the man has very strong control over a country. Now, it's a very different system, and I don't happen to like the system. But certainly in that system, he's been a leader. Ford is the leader of Russia. That's the whole point. This whole diatribe about Putin is beyond me. Say one thing about Putin and move on. When you're sticking and talking about Putin, you're losing this debate. You had 24 minutes to make a lot of cases, and really Hillary Clinton gave you a very wide opening because her experience, which she touts as a winner, was actually hurting her in that debate when we went down to the email scandal, to her vote on the Iraq war. That's what he should have been talking about. It was a waste of time to talk about Putin, and I think it hurt him. Uh, Leslie, what about his comments with regards to the generals? That's something else uh, that has really gotten a lot of attention uh, this morning, basically saying that under the leadership of Barack Obama, and this is direct quote, and Hillary Clinton, the generals have been reduced to rubble. A lot of our military leaders this morning are, are not happy with those comments. Oh, I know. It amazes me that he does better with vets and military because the vets and military members call into my show and I'm, my radio show is carried on the American Armed Forces Radio Network. They're like, where, where are the people asking us about the polls? Uh, because they really don't like what uh, he has had to say. Specifically with regard to this, you know, I saw a guy the other day wearing a hat that said, um, America is great. And I think when you make comments like this and belittle those in command, such as generals, when we have the greatest military and the greatest nation in the world. And in addition, I think this also shows this lack of knowledge for how things work between the Pentagon, the military, and the commander in chief. Although the president is in a position to make many decisions uh, solely, uh, most all uh, presidents, uh, unless they've been generals like Washington and others themselves, they're going right. to take the advisement of their joint chiefs, the military and the Pentagon. Well, and he, and he has expressed that, to be fair. He has expressed that he would take under advisement those that would be under him, whether they would be new generals or not, is the other thing. I want to show you a couple of polls here, which I find very interesting for. I want you to take a look at these. If you look at the recent CNN Orc poll, who would better handle terrorism? Donald Trump is at 51 percent and she's at 45 percent. But then you move over to foreign policy. Who would better handle foreign policy? 
She's leading 56% to 40%. Why the disparity in this, do you think, Ford? Because it's divided up in the voter's mind. Foreign policy is not seen as fighting terrorism or maybe how to take it best to a, to a battlefield enemy. And foreign policy for a lot of people is diplomacy and making nice. The point that she's draft, driving home about Donald Trump is his temperament, and people are equating temperament with foreign policy. And when it comes to sort of holding back and not being honest, he's scoring much stronger on terrorism because she's saying that she's going to carry on Barack Obama's policies, and that's right. something that a lot of folks are not very happy All about. Right. So, so if Trump wants to be successful, he needs to make terrorism a bigger part of the foreign policy section of a lot of voters' minds. Real quick before you go, Leslie, i got to get your reaction to this. Gary Johnson was on MSNBC this morning, and he made a bit of a faux pas. Listen to this. What would you do if you were elected about Aleppo? About Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Aleppo is in Syria. It's the, uh, it's the epicenter of the refugee crisis. Okay, got it. Got it. Leslie, your thoughts on that? <laughs> Look, I have said if you're going to vote for Gary Johnson or Jill Stein, you are throwing your vote away. You're putting money on a horse that's going to lose. In addition, if you're going to vote for an individual that doesn't know what or where Aleppo is and they're supposed to control foreign policy, terrorism, uh, handling situations with ISIS, please do us a favor and stay home. I felt bad for him, honestly, to not know this. Yeah, well, I'm sure, like I heard David Asman say earlier, when he's 90 years old, he's going to look back and look on that moment. He'll, he'll never forget that moment. I don't think we will either. No. Leslie Fort, we're going to see you in just a little bit. Thank you so much for standing by.